I have seen multiple different methods of figuring out the diagnosis for the sacrum. After the physical exam, then you have to figure out what to do with the findings. I have had professors and attendings like to do a sacrum dance where they utilize their whole body in the form of a sacrum. I can't really see that going over well while you sit in an exam at school or in the testing center at Prometric and your patients are going to look at you funny. Others like to draw a little sacrum and they'll cross things off and on. That is a good method. You'll always have scratch paper during the tests, but I have my own method that I like to use. Uh, I use both of my hands. Once the seated flexion test uh, indicates a side, I again will use my pinky to denote that. I will then take the other findings, fingertips being that of the sacral base, and my wrists being that of the ILAs. So when the test or a physical exam finding will show an anterior or deep sacral base, I will then move in that direction. And then likewise, the anterior or posterior ILAs, I will utilize that. Take the easier ones first. A unilateral will have the side of the dysfunction. So in this case, right side will have a deep sacral base and a posterior ILA or will be the other way with a shallow or posterior uh, sacral base and the deeper ILA. If you find an unequivocal seated flexion test and both ILAs appear to be deep, that is a bilateral sacral flexion. Likewise, if they both are shallow, that is a bilateral sacral extension. The extensions are the ones where the Sphinx test comes in useful. As they are extended, it is much more difficult to push down on the base of the sacrum. The right on right, the left on left are much more difficult. Utilizing the side found on the seated flexion test, that then makes the axis being opposite. So this one is a right seated flexion test which would make it a left axis. So this is either going to be a right on left or a left on left. This point, if it appears to be an anterior motion, which is where the spring test comes in, if the spring test is negative, it most likely would then be a left on left. The findings would then be the right sacral base is deeper along with the right ILA being deeper, providing that type of motion. The pathologic dysfunctions are the extension type, which would then be again still the left axis, but the posterior motion or the positive spring test, and then the right sacral base being shallower and same with the ILA as it is.